benefits absolutely in you. And today I received an interesting email from a YouTube viewer asking me to go a little bit deeper into why it is we are so afraid to confront people who are confrontational. Why is it that people who are codependent have a difficult time pushing back a narcissistic person or someone on the spectrum? Right? I want to address situations in which those of us who struggle with codependency, who have become people pleasers, who tend to be more timid and introverted, who when we think about opening our mouth or expressing how we feel, oftentimes get tongue-tied, feel our throat chakra close up, feel pressure in our chest, and retreat into ourselves and stuff our feelings. So I wanna to talk to people who are experiencing that type of dynamic in their life right now. Okay, so if you are the type of person who is generally introverted, very highly intuitive, sensitive, meek, don't really speak out, and you are attracting people into your life that are constantly pushing your boundaries, I wanna explain a little bit about the science behind what's going on. If you've been following my work, you know that I talk all about childhood programming and this idea that the child's brain is impressionable. And when we were children, we were downloaded to believe a certain set of beliefs. And really what's in our brain, we didn't put there. You know, <laughs> What's been put into our brain is, is the product of our environment. And it could be our mothers, our fathers, our aunts, our uncles, our religions, our the, the ideas about politics that our parents infuse into us, about other races, about you name it, about money. This all becomes what I call childhood programming. So if you came from a home where it was dysfunctional and you weren't allowed to talk about your feelings or every time you tried to talk about your feelings you were intimidated or you were ignored a lot of that, that not all of us were overtly abused and those of us who were just completely abandoned suffered just as much on a psychological, emotional, as well as chemical level. So we have this childhood programming. We come from not the healthiest of homes, right? There's millions of us, okay? Millions of us that don't come from the healthiest of homes. We have this childhood programming that has us believing we are not good enough and that we need outside validation to move forward. Unfortunately, what ends up happening is that because there's this this idea running in our subconscious mind that has us believing that we need validation, we've attracted people who don't give us validation, unfortunately, because they represent our family patterns of the past, right? Because what's below the surface is actually what's creating what's out here. We have to understand that science is moving closer and closer and closer to proving. And there are lots of scientists out there now that are actually saying it. They're committing to the idea that what is in the subconscious mind is actually constructing and helping construct what is in the outer world. And that is very difficult for a lot of people to accept, especially those who are in abusive relationships, because we hear ourselves saying, why the hell would I attract an abusive relationship? Not saying we do it on purpose. If you want to blame somebody, then blame your mother and father, <laughs> or blame your grandparents, or, or blame your great-grandparents. The reality is, our subconscious programming creates beliefs and we run our life off of these beliefs unconscious to this idea that we have this subconscious programming, this childhood programming. And as adults, we are actually recreating the patterns of the past. And how that happens in my humble, humble opinion is through vibrations. We are, this is a vibrational planet and we are giving off a certain frequency and that frequency, whatever frequency we have, whatever our emotional set point is, affects out the outer world because we are giving off a particular frequency and thus we are going to attract a particular frequency. The great news is that once you become aware of this idea, you can actually change your frequencies. You really can. And that's what I'm all, I'm all about. That's what I teach in my coaching programs, the 12 week breakthrough coaching program and my master class, which is due out in a few weeks, which I'm really excited about. But I actually help abused adult children who have grown up in dysfunctional homes 
understand what is at play in the subconscious mind and how we today are recreating, not consciously, but we're recreating these childhood dynamics that we really don't want to take part of anymore in our adult lives. It is very difficult to confront narcissistic people as an adult today if we have been downloaded with information that has us believing that confronting people will net us a negative result. The problem is we have a subconscious belief associated with confronting people. We associate pain with confronting people. And so what we do is we don't confront people. The problem is that unless something changes, nothing's going to change. And what will happen is in life, life is sort of like a snowball that's been, that's been pushed down a hill. If we don't learn to stop that snowball from going down that hill, we pick up momentum on the way down. And that's why the older we get, and the, the older we get without actually changing these patterns, the worse our lives get. We get married, we have one child, we have two children, we have three children, we get divorced, we attract the same person, we have another child, oh my God, things get crazy, we get divorced again, we marry the same type of a person, and we're picking up momentum as we go in life because we haven't gotten to the root of what is the problem. We're all the same. We all keep attracting what's in the subconscious mind, all of us. No, none of us escape. And the really cool thing is that once we change what's, change what's in the subconscious mind, we can stop what's going on out here. The trick is to learn how to become aware, aware of what's happening in the subconscious mind. Most people who are, live in fear are stuck in the limbic system. And we have to move into the prefrontal cortex. We have to move into higher brain function so we can actually observe what's happening in the subconscious mind. So this is what separates us from animals, being able to ob be objective about what's happening in the subconscious mind. Again, this is what all my work is about. It's about helping people, abused adult children who have been abandoned, in my opinion, because... We have been told by therapists and spiritual teachers to just get over it, just forgive, just be nice to people, just think happy thoughts. Well, that's a bunch of hogwash because until you change what is going on in the subconscious mind, you cannot attract anything different than what is in the subconscious mind. So dear ones, the scientific reason for why we keep attracting narcissistic people or the scientific reason for why we are unable to push people back is really the reason is, the scientific reason, is because below the veil of consciousness in the subconscious mind are beliefs, ideas, as well as patterns of behavior that need to be confronted once and for all. I don't care how many times you get divorced, I don't care how many times you do affirmations, until you heal the pattern that is locked in the subconscious mind that has created this dynamic in the first place, you can't change what's happening out here. So what I want you guys to do is take a nice big sigh of relief because now you know it's really not your fault. That the way the human mind works has, is outside of your ability to actually, you know, you didn't create this. You weren't the creator of all that is, right? So we have been created with this brain and it works a certain way and we've been plugged into this matrix that, that is, is the external world. And now what we're trying to do is learn how to exist within this, within this paradigm. We are trying to learn how to use our minds to our own advantage, right? So take a deep breath. It's not your fault. You know, it's none of us. It's not our fault. It's not our fault that our parents patterned us with a certain set of beliefs. Not our fault that our grandparents patterned our parents with a certain set of beliefs. Not our fault. But at one point in time, dear ones, if we really want to be the creators of our own reality, we have to roll up our sleeves be objective about what's been downloaded, regardless of who downloaded it, and we have to learn how to change our beliefs. Now, you need to do meditations in order to slow down the mental field enough that you are able to connect to the prefrontal lobe because the prefrontal lobe, activity in the prefrontal lobe, will actually allow you to observe the thoughts that are dysfunctional. So for some of you, it may come as a relief to know that it's not your fault if you have a difficult time confronting people who are narcissistic or who push your boundaries. But this video is all about helping you understand why. Why am I afraid to push people back? What am I afraid of? And so as you begin to ask yourself open-ended questions about what am I afraid of, you know, who taught me to be afraid of pushing people back? 
How do I really feel? What am I afraid of? What am I afraid is what am I afraid is going to happen if I push someone back? If I say, hey, you violated my boundary. What am I afraid of if I assert a boundary? Most people are afraid of being abandoned. But the reality is, dear one, if you have people in your life who are pushing your boundaries, then they've most likely abandoned you already. So what I want you to do is be a little bit more objective about what kind of relationships you're in because if you're already being abandoned by your friends or by a lover or even by a parent it's really important for you to be able to look at that with an objective eye really really look at it learn to associate less fear with being able to look at what's really going on inside your dynamics a great thing that I think that anybody can do right here right now to help them heal from this type of a subconscious mindset you know about being afraid to confront people or being afraid to push people back it's very simple is to begin meditation and meditation is all about slowing down the mind self-hypnosis the same thing slowing down the mind so that you can actually catch the thoughts that you know are dysfunctional I suggest that you listen to some of the med meditations that I have on YouTube they will help you understand the types of thoughts that are running in the subconscious mind that you need to confront so, dear ones, the good news is, although it's kind of like a double-edged sword, it's not your fault if you've been downloaded to fear confronting people. Remember, our subconscious programming is the result of our environments, right? So if we were programmed dysfunctionally by our parents, then they were dysfunctionally programmed by their parents, and so on, and so on, and so on. And we are really a happy, well, we are actually a lucky group of people who have the ability to learn this stuff to milk our higher states of cognition, to think with the prefrontal cortex and the neocortex, and to understand the power of the subconscious mind, and to learn what we need to learn, to rewire the ideas that are, that are downloaded in our subconscious mind, so we can stop attracting narcissistic people, so we can begin truly being the creators of our own reality. So dear ones, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. There's actually science behind why it's difficult for you to actually push people back. Confronting people is never easy, especially when you're codependent. We care about what other people think about us. And those are the types of subconscious programming. That's the kind of subconscious programming we need to confront. So if you're afraid of what other people are going to think about you, if you're afraid of being blamed, what I suggest dear ones is that you rewind the tape in your mind and you say to yourself things like over and over and over and over and over you say I don't need other people's validation it's okay if people talk about me I can't control what other people think about me narcissists never take responsibility for their actions narcissists are always victims so when you begin to confront the fears that you're having associated with pushing people back and you remind yourself over and over and over and over of what you can control and can't control when you do that consistently you are actually reducing the fear that you have associated with pushing someone back and losing their approval the key is really to find ways to confront the fear that you have associated with pushing people back when you confront that fear and you look at it and you say to yourself well I'm afraid of losing their approval well you never had their approval in the first place dear one most likely likely so what you say to yourself is it's okay if I don't get their approval I don't need their approval I need my own approval and I promise you if you practice these ideas over and over and over but you also this is the key dear one well one of the keys you have to act on that so let's say you journal about it which is awesome and you remind yourself about it all the time let's say you do a meditation and you begin to be more mindful of those types of ideas then you actually have to act on it so let's say you would normally you know call someone to check on them who really never calls and checks on you let's say you have like for me I used to go like four or five days and if one of my friends didn't call me I called them to make sure that we were still cool so when I started to break those patterns I knew that I had to stop doing the things that were reinforcing the codependent behavior and the codependent belief systems in my mind. So you have to now act on what you're trying to change. So you have an idea, you figure out what you're afraid of, you confront that fear, you rewind the tape, you think about ideas that that are in opposition to that fear. So I'm afraid of losing their approval, I don't need their approval. And then what you do in the real world, in real time, you actually act on that new idea. 
So if you ordinarily call people to check on people, you deliberately tell yourself, no, I'm not calling. I don't need her validation. And that's the way you can successfully begin to get into the operating system of the subconscious mind and break the patterns that no longer serve you. Good luck, dear ones. Namaste.